Well, good morning, Donnie Walker here. Oh, I think it's Friday, TGIF. <laughs> I haven't been uh, done a TGIF for a while. Sunshine out there. Looks like it might be a fine weekend. About 30% chance of uh, showers today. Kind of a sweater weather today, you know, nothing outrageous. Poor people in the east. I just talked to a friend out in the Ontario area yesterday. I've been like minus 35. Oh, man. And he said in 24 hours or 36 hours, all of a sudden it was plus 8. Wow. What a difference out there, eh? But, yeah, you can have that minus 35 stuff. That's why I live on the, the wet coast of Canada. Sure, that wetness is a bummer sometimes, but <clears throat> we don't get it freezing here all that often. We get similar weather to, like, uh, Washington State, like Seattle, Tacoma, kind of that, eh? Sometimes even a little better. Anyways, some guys were asking me about Husqvarna chain brakes, 200 series, some 300 series, uh, about how they operate, how you re replace the uh, brake, brake, brake band on them. So they call them an inertia brake. That's, that's what the Husqvarna, I don't know if they're the first to call that, but the inertia brake brake system and Husqvarna ones have always, always worked really well this is a 395 one but similar design to 288 272 and whatnot with the outboard clutch design so your band is in the cover here eh? so they call it an inertia for a reason this has got like a weighted handle right so even if the saw gets dropped hard or whatever and your hand doesn't hit the handle at least the chain brake will still go on and it won't cut your leg off or your arm or whatever but here i'll show you how it works if i shake this really hard hear that snap it came on see the brake band is on that will lock the clutch right these got a super heavy duty spring in them so it's hard to reset this if it's not on the saw so you put it back into your put it into a vise clamp it down hard and push it back Hey, that's, a, that's a pretty good force, eh? Yeah, they got a good snap and chain break on them. Some of these get war because what happens, George Wood will tell you that. He, he knows these very well. He's about my one very good customer that runs all 395s. So this little tit on the back here, this little bump, that fits in a grommet in the crankcase, okay? Actually, that's funny. I just happen to have a 395 case here. So normally in the case here, there's a bushing right there, okay? A black bushing. When this is on, the saw, a little bump sits in that bushing. Once you throw the chain a bunch of times, you can wear that bump off. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, you see all the chain's been flying off here, marking up this guard, right? So once this bump's gone, this thing, misaligns itself <clears throat> start moving around and the chain the chain um the clutch drum starts to rub on the brake band here and wears it and breaks it uh, so then it doesn't work so you got to bring in and get a new band or a new cover to get that bump fixed i've seen some guys put like a bolt in there a stud if it breaks off not a bad idea um because the covers aren't that cheap i forget what they're worth but whatever Okay, so I'm going to go through the disassembly of this and then the assembly of it, how to reset the, the brake spring. What a lot of people do wrong is they, they start taking the handle apart, the brake handle itself. Don't do that. Just take your screw out for your two bushings here, which I'm going to show you in a sec, and just pull the handle off. Then, then go work on the rest of it. Don't take all the, the guts of the handle apart, okay? So let's activate this one to get it apart because if I don't, when I take that spring out, it can come shooting out. It's quite dangerous, so I have safety glasses on and a rag over top of it, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's activate this one on, and let's get down and take it apart. Oh yeah, I got some brake pads from my go-kart. Got them out of Las Vegas from some friends of mine at Acceleration Kart Racing. Thanks guys for shipping them that fast for me. And thanks Johnny for helping me order them up online there, because I don't uh, order stuff online normally. So I got two sets. That way I'm not gonna wear out again. Okay, let's get back, let's get to this chain break now and I'm gonna show you how it comes apart here. Okay, get you down here. 
Okay, so it's activated now. You're, you're gonna take a Phillips screwdriver and take these screws out after we get the handle off. So let's get our T-wrench out, four mil T-bar, take your screw, kind of get it about halfway out, then take your good old hammer, give the screw a little tap, and it starts pushing that bushing out on the other side, eh? Okay, take it out a little bit more of the screw until that bushing comes, falls out of that other side, basically, as you unthread the screw. See, there's the one side bushing, the screw, and the other bushing. Just take your T-bar and put it in there, give it a little smack with the hammer, and smack that side out. So there's your two inserts in the side and your screw. So I'm, and then now just pull your handle off, okay? Okay, don't take that apart. Some of these, the hole for these bushings will get wore, then your chain brake will come on and off, on too easily, so you need to replace your cover. So after it's apart now, we got the handle off, we're gonna take our four screws off for our cover here for our spring. This is where you really gotta watch that spring doesn't come out. Have yourself an extra rag here. Just get the four screws out. I kind of leave the, these bottom ones in last. Okay. And you're going to hear the spring come out. I've actually broken lights above me with these springs. The spring will fly out, hit the fluorescent light above me and break it. And fall the glass comes down on you. So yeah, safety glasses. And be careful what you're doing here. Okay, all the screws are out. I'm going to lift the cover out. Just watch that spring is still down in there, okay? Now I'll put the rag over it. Now I'll take another screwdriver, like a little flat blade. I'm just going to go underneath and pop it out. Here it snap. Okay, the spring came, came out, eh? There's your spring. They're a real heavy-duty spring. So let's pull that out. Pull the band out. There's a little dowel there. Okay. Now we're going to just give it a little wipe, get some of the debris out of there. Now there's a little dowel pin here you got to take out for this actuating arm. So you simply just put it on top of your vise. You can take a tuning screwdriver and sharpen it up like a punch if you don't have the right size punch. And we're just going to give it a little smack with the hammer. Okay, that pushed it out enough that you can now take... Some pliers and just and pull it out okay there's your chain brake assembly you got this little spring loaded thing here and that's to help the the brake move back and forth a little tension on it okay so let's get this out let's say this was broken right here right here that's normally the points undo this screw slide a new band onto it okay and then now we're going to reassemble it There's a little dowel pin in the brake band itself. It just fell on the ground, so watch you don't lose that. Set that back in there. And put our brake band back, back in. Okay, set it in the groove it's supposed to go. Kind of back there like that. Get this arm into its spot. Okay. Line up your hole in your activating arm for that pin to go back through. What I do is I put the screwdriver from the opposite side, okay? Just so you can line it up better. Then put your, your pin in there and give it a top. Back in, okay? That's the easy way to line it up. Put the little screwdriver all in there, punch to hold it lined up so you can get that in. Okay, so now we're gonna put the spring back in. This is this is a tough part. These are a lot of tension to them. Get the spring over its little arm there. Okay, now you wanna put the tension, tension into it. So you get, what I use is a pair of needle nose. I go to the end of the spring and just push it in and push it down in that groove holding your finger on it so it doesn't fly out. Now, keep your finger on it, get your cover, 
put that cover on and I'll keep holding it down. Now get, get that screw, get one screw in for sure. And then start your other ones. That way that spring's not going to come flying out on you. Get the back screw in, keep holding it down, then put your second screw in it next, okay? Right by where the, the brake band kind of hooks in. Now that spring's secured and it's not going to pop out and hit you in the face or break the light above you. Okay, get the other two screws in. Hope everyone's got some plans this weekend. Take your kids fishing. Go we'll cut some firewood. Trim some trees, cut your grass. Mine's almost ready to be cut, cut right now, actually. Okay, so screws are all in, covers on. Now you notice this, the, the chain brake is locked on like it'd be locked on the drum. So this is where you have to reset them. So you need a reset tool. A reset tool is just a long steel bar with a pin on the front and this other pin here. So the tool sits in this little hole where this tension spring is for your arm. Then you pull this backwards and preset the spring. Because it's so hard, I put them into a vise. You notice this one's got some weld on it because this pin broke. So I put a long six mil bolt through it and just brazed it up. You can make one of these yourself. It's about an inch spacing. Use about a five millimeter, four millimeter screw here you could use, or some sort of piece of rod, and then your thing back there. Now put the chain brake <coughs> cover into the vise. Secure it good. Okay, now I'm gonna put my setter in there and pull back on it. Hear that? Click. Okay, now it's preset. Now it's simple to put the handle on. That's why you don't take these apart. You don't need to, unless it's been belted and then you replace it. Set your handle down over like so. So it kind of lines up the hole. Let's get it out of the vise. See how the hole lines up? Okay, for your bushings. Let's put our first bushing in that's got the thread at end. Just kind of set it in there. Take your hammer, give her a little knock in. Okay, now it's in there. Go to your other side. Put your other little collar in, then your screw. Now you can just tighten the screw up, and voila, it's done. Doesn't take long at all when you got the right stuff and the know how. So, you guys can do all that yourself. So, yeah, there you go. So, it's all together. Let's put it in the vise and just test it. Yeah, there we go. Locked on. Locked off, locked on, locked off. That's how you do the outer clutches type side covers for Husqvarna saws. A lot of people that have the newer small 300 series saws, 351, 350s, you know what I mean, all those ones. With the inboard clutches, you have the chain brake in the cover. Uh, let's see if I can find one here. Uh, yeah, here's one right here on the 357. What happens on these, guys get them locked on, and they try to take the barn chain off because the chain brake's locked on. They don't understand. They just needed to pull the chain brake back and then take it off. But they have, they have to bring it in to get reset because they can't reset it. So I keep a spare handle around all the time. And the guy brings the saw and I take that off, reset it, put it back on, way to go again. That happens a lot on the 300 saws. And they're a little bit different to rebuild as, as well. Okay, there you go. That's how you do that side cover. The spring or the chain or chain brake band. So anyways, it's Friday, TGIF. Keep your saw on the wood. Stick on the ice, rubber on the road. Have a great weekend. Check out the walkersawshop.com online store. Have a good one. Bye.